Hello everybody! Today I'm gonna show you how to build an energy system for an on-chain game on Solana. Um, the game is gonna be called Sol Lumberjack and what you can do is you can um, chop trees and you have uh, energy that refills over time. So here you can see I, uh, I chopped a tree, I got one wood and now the energy is counting down. Energy systems are a very common system in like usual, like traditional casual games. So for example, you can see it like in Candy Crush or something. You have this energy bar that slowly fills up over time. And then you use the energy to perform certain actions in the game. You can see it, for example, in merch games or in Candy Crush or so on. And today we're going to build something like a lumberjack where you like walk around. And whenever you chop a tree, you spend one energy and then you get one lurk for it. It's going to look like this. It's based on the Solana um, uh, app scaffold. So you can easily do this by just typing npx create solana dep and then the app name and this will conveniently create you a few folders here like an anchor uh, app program an anchor program and an app which is a next.js react app first uh, thing we're going to do is we're going to go through the program so here on the bottom you can see the player data this is the account that uh, every player will create when they start the game it consists of a name, a level, experience, wood, energy, and the last login. The last login is used to um, create, um, to calculate how much energy, energy the player would have at a certain point. And here um, it's the um, accounts for this. Is um, The space will be set to 1000. It's just because then you can, can add a little bit more data later. The seats are the player and the signer public key. And the program consists of um, three instructions. First is init player, then chop tree, and update. And the init player will set the energy to max energy, so to 10. And it will set the last login to the current Unix timestamp. Then in the chop tree instruction, um, what we will do is first we check if the energy is um, zero. Then the player doesn't have enough energy, so we return an error. It's very good to use these error codes because then later in the uh, in the client you can check for certain errors and then in this case for example you can show the player a pop-up and tell them hey do you want to refill your energy for a few a little bit of sol or some spl tokens for example then uh, what we do next is we uh, add one wood to the player account and we subscribe uh, subtract one energy the interesting part happens here in update energy so in update energy, what we do is the first thing we um, calculate the time that has passed since the last login. So we're going to take the current Unix timestamp and we subtract the last login. And then while the time passed is still bigger than time to refill energy, 60 seconds, then we add one energy and we subtract the time to refill energy from the time passed and we add it to the time spent. The time spent we later down here used so that the player, if he already is at eight energy and he spends one more, that he doesn't have to wait the whole 60 seconds again, but instead uh, the countdown just continues from where he left off. And then when the energy is max energy, we just break. So how this looks like is like if I chop the tree two times now, for example, then you can see that instead of like going back to 60 seconds, it just continues the countdown from there. So this is already um, everything that happens in the program. And then here, instead of the program, we go to the app folder now. But before we do that is from the target, we can see that um, there's an IDL created. Then IDL is a JSON representation of your program and it has everything in it like the instructions, init player, chop tree, it has here the data, and also very conveniently the error codes that you can check later in the client. And it also creates your TypeScript client. And this one we're gonna copy, and then we put it into our app folder into um, IDL. And this is the same thing as the IDL JSON, but it's uh, in TypeScript. And then everything for the game happens in the chop tree um, TSX file. So we're going to go through here from top to bottom. First, we have the account again, name, level, XP, wood, energy, last login, and so on. Then we get the connection. We get the public key. As soon as we have the public key, we show the different buttons and we yeah, show it on screen. Then we have a state here for the game data account. That one, as soon as we set the data updates, so you can see the data from this account here. 
Then we have the time passed and the next energy in. And then we get an anchor wallet. We create an anchor provider by putting in the connection and the wallet. We set the provider and then we create the program from this IDL here, which we just put into the right position, IDL uh, slash lumberjack. And we put in also the lumberjack program ID and the provider. The program ID you get as soon as you here um, write uh, anchor build and anchor deploy, then you will get the program ID. And then you can just copy it into a constants file in the client. Next thing here, we not necessarily need, but as soon as the game state changes, we lock the game state. So the game state looks like this. Here you can see um, the player's level zero. He has uh, 24 wood and uh, nine energy and the last login timestamp. Then uh, what we do here is we have another effect that uh, is performed every time the public key changes. This is where we get the new data of the game data account. So we call the program account player data. We call fetch for this PDA. This uh, is created like uh, derived like same in the program from the public key and the player and the program ID. And as soon as we get the data, then we set the game state to the game state we get from the anchor program. And if there's no data yet, then we show a little pop-up, hey, you need to initialize uh, your account first. And then the player needs to initialize their account. And you could also add something like uh, they add a name, for example, to their account. And now this here is very interesting um, on account change. What it does, it uh, creates a WebSocket connection to the RPC node. And as soon as the account changes, um, the data will be pushed to us. And then we can just set the game state from um, from the data that like, that we get from this account info. And we can use the program's decoder to decode the player data and then set it into the game state. Now comes the interesting part, the updating of the energy. So it's another effect that will always uh, reset when the game state changes and the time passed. And it will set an interval, which is called every second. And it does the same thing as in the program. So first we convert the um, timestamp from milliseconds to seconds. We calculate the time passed. And as soon as, as long as the time passed is bigger than the time to refill energy, in this case, 60 seconds, we add one energy and we set the last login to last login. And if someone can tell me why I have to add this little plus here to convert energy to a number, otherwise it would just say nine, one, for example, in the energy, that would be really cool. Like, I really don't understand this since this is typed to a number. But uh, anyway, they should call it, <laughs> could be any TypeScript instead of TypeScript, maybe. So then we uh, set the next energy, next time in to next energy in, and this will automatically update here in the bottom our little representation of the data of the game. Wood energy, next energy in. And then the next thing is uh, what we have here is uh, on init click. We just do some checks. We get the PDA again. You could probably uh, do this getting the PDA only once whenever the public key changes in a state would be a bit nicer. Then you can uh, do init player here. You put the accounts, player, signer, system program. In this case, we need the system program as well because Anchor creates a new account. And for that, it does a cross program invocation to the system program to create the account. And on Solana, you always need to put in all the accounts for performance optimization on the chain. Then we get here the transaction builder and we send out the transaction. And I usually like to set skip preflight to true. What this does is um, even if the simulation fails, it would still send out the transaction. And then you can see the error code here on chain in the Explorer, which uh, often helps to debug uh, certain errors that you might have. And then here's this nice little notify thing. It's a uh, functionality from the app scaffold. So that is nice. And then, um, yeah, then on, on shop click, it does the same thing. A few checks, get the PDA. And this time we call shop tree. This time we don't need the system program. We just need the player data, PDA, and the signer. Then we send out the instruction and it would shop a tree. It subtracts the energy. And then every second we update the energy in the game. So that is already it for um, the program. You can check out this uh, repository. Um, I will put the link to this in the description. It comes with a bit more explanation of how everything works. And then you can build something something like this, where a player like, could uh, upgrade now the access for... You could even improve it a bit by adding, instead of just increasing a counter in the program, you could use the token program and then mint a token every time the player creates a lurk. 
And then you could use the luck to sell it for gold. And then you could use gold to upgrade your X. And then you could build a building with more gold and so on. So I hope someone builds a nice little mobile game with this. And yeah, the repository is in the comments. And if you have any questions, um, put them in the comments as well. Like the video and see you next time.